Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The General Hospital spoilers for Wednesday, March 13 indicate that Marshall Ashford was informed by Curtis Ashford at the Savoy that he had located the physician responsible for his initial misdiagnosis. Dr. Paul Braddock was the man's name and he resided in a posh retirement community in Maryland. Curtis offered to drive Marshall about so he could get the whole story and ask questions. When Selena Wu stormed in, she accused Jason Morgan of being the person who had fired at Curtis. Selena asserted that since Jason was employed by Sonny Corinthos alone, she and Curtis had both been duped. Selena then implied that Sonny had faked assassination attempts and that he had a long-term strategy to acquire territory with Jason's assistance. Considering what had happened to Dan Falconeri and in Puerto Rico, Curtis questioned that Sonny was issuing the orders, but Selena seemed to have an explanation for everything and acted as though Sonny would take out anyone who stood in his way. Marshall advised Curtis to postpone their road trip after Selena left. But Curtis was determined to go through with it so his father could have the necessary closure. Carly Spencer stood up for Jason there, saying he had to have return as soon as possible. When Carly put Jason first in her heart, Drew was unable to be with her and effectively admitted that he was only a stand-in. Carly claimed she didn't mean to hurt Drew when she understood he was dumping her. Although Drew was aware of this, he felt compelled to cut his losses because he was unable to compete with Jason. Carly questioned whether Drew was firing her after he indicated he was letting her off the hook at Crimson. Drew pretended that they both knew Carly's heart wasn't in it in the first place and advised her to be careful as she left. Drew hit the punching bag in the boxing gym to let off frustration. She was shocked to hear that Drew did not immediately believe Jason was innocent and wanted him to be arrested once Jordan Ashford appeared. Jordan shared her misgivings about her work with Drew, who complained about his separation with Carly. Despite her apparent fondness for her job at the PCP, Jordan remained steadfast in her resolve to support Laura Collins in her role as deputy mayor. In the end, Drew and Jordan proposed a meeting so they could work together to enhance the pictures of Aurora and poor Charles. When Carly and Sam McCall ran into one other at G.H. outside Dante's room, Carly said Jason had been to see her. Sam became irritated with Carly for not questioning Jason more after she had described how everything transpired. Sam said she would never forgive Jason if he was the reason Dante was connected to those machines in the intensive care unit. Sam stressed that if Jason contacted Carly again, she should call the police because she wished she could do something to help. Sonny was advised by Anna Devane at the police station not to pursue Jason or the other missing suspect after she looked over the facts with him. When Adam Harrington's character John Cates showed there, he sounded dubious about Anna's rendezvous with Sonny. Despite John's attempts to obtain information from Harrison Chase, Chase refused to provide any information and maintain his faith in Anna. Cates entered the questioning room after Sonny told Anna that he no longer knew Jason. Sonny pressed Cates to find the bastard who fired at Dante and utilize that badge of his. Danny Morgan interrupted Michael Corinthos and Willow Corinthos' evening at the Quartermain Gatehouse in order to ask for a favor. When Michael saw Jason after Danny had brought him to the boathouse, he was taken aback and began to embrace him but Jason winced in agony. Although Jason realized he shouldn't be include Michael in this, he seemed to believe it would be preferable than Danny, who was still a teenager, being involved. Although Danny was upset that Jason had excluded him from the conversation, he consented to allow Michael to return him to the main home. Rather, Michael escorted Willow back to the boathouse, where she bandaged Jason's wound and gave him additional supplies and left Danny to watch the kids at the gatehouse. Willow's involvement didn't sit well with Jason, but she was adamant that he was now her patient and nothing more. Jason discovered they had multiple children when Michael indicated that Danny was monitoring the children. He also received updates on Amelia Corinthos. 
Jason clarified that Hamish was the one who shot Dante, but it was obvious that he still felt accountable for Dante ending up there. Willow covered Jason after seeing him sleeping with his weapon after getting him a blanket. With a thoughtful expression, Willow greeted Jason home. When Ned Quartermain called Danny, Michael answered in his place, acting as though they had just lost track of time while playing video games. Danny was then sent back to the main home by Michael, who also issued a warning to keep quiet about everything. We'll provide you with more forecasts on the turns and turns to come as general hospital spoilers indicate that there may be more stunning news about Jason. For the latest information on General Hospital, check out CDL frequently as we have the best General Hospital spoilers, predictions, news, and updates. According to General Hospital teasers, Steve Burton is staying put now that he's reprising his well-liked Jason Morgan character. Burton made the decision to make his status clear because there has been some misunderstanding on social media over the duration of Jason's return visitation. Burton addressed some misinformation on the internet and resolved any disagreements between fans on a podcast episode of the daily drama. It's obvious that the authors aren't attempting to stage a gotcha moment in which Jason Morgan returns home before taking off once more. With a long storyline ahead of him, Jason will have plenty of time to make amends with everyone he left behind. Steve Burton brought up a rumor that he was on a three-month contract that ended with his death. Due to several viewers' online arguments, Burton clarified the situation with some updates because he has been a member for much longer. Hey, I bet you can guess what? There is a two-year contract and I plan to live, Burton urged. That's fantastic news since Jason Morgan's return has given the show new life and inspired a variety of fresh problems to be explored. It's been pleasant to have Jason at the center of things once more particularly considering that his loved ones aren't sure if they still see the same person in him. Naturally, it will be intriguing to watch what happens to Burton after his two-year deal is over. Will Burton give up wearing his leather jacket permanently or sign on for even more GH? Burton said that he believed he had two to three years left of acting, before he went on and concentrated on other things in a prior interview with TV Guide. But a lot can happen in a few years so Burton might opt to extend his stay for many more years when this one expires by signing a new contract. In any case, the fact that Steve Burton is currently contracted for a minimum of two years gives fans reason to celebrate and simply enjoy the program, as his future in PC is assured. According to General Hospital spoilers, Jason will need to work his way out of a few more sticky positions. We'll keep you updated on any forecasts regarding the challenging journey ahead. Make CDL your go-to GH destination for thrilling spoilers, forecasts, news, and updates about General Hospital. According to General Hospital, GH, spoilers, there has been a lot of discussion regarding Karen Wexler, formerly played by Marie Wilson, on the program lately. As a result, we have the inside scoop on this 1992 debut. It was Carrie Shane's first appearance in the part she would portray until 1994. In 1997, Jennifer Hammond assumed Karen's role on the GA spin-off series Poor Charles. The final incarnation of Karen was Marie Wilson, who lived from 1999 to 2003. While Karen was in high school, she was romantically involved with Jason Quartermain, but her true love was John Jagger Cates. After Karen and Jagger eventually reunited, she battled some painful memories that she had previously suppressed. Karen remembered the mistreatment she had received from Ray Conway, her mom's inebriated boyfriend. Following the flood of memories, Karen started to spiral out of control and eventually met Stone Cates, even though at the time she was unaware that Stone was Jagger's younger brother. Karen was drawn into the world of Sonny Corinthos by Stone. At the same time that Sonny hired Karen as a stripper at the Paradise Lounge, Karen also developed a drug addiction. Fans of GH have heard a lot of John's criticisms, since he believes that Sonny took advantage of a helpless girl and made her life worse. Karen ultimately ended up in Sonny's bed. Thanks for watching if you liked this video. 
So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.